after Ireland's bonus point victory in Dublin earlier in the day. England went into this game in Paris knowing they had to match that result. A tall order for the English who were wounded after the defeat by Scotland in their last outing. France ended an eight-match run without a win with victory over Italy last time. Francois Tranduc in for Lionel Boxes, the only change in their starting 15. Try-scoring opportunities were few and far between in a stop-start first half punctuated by penalties. After Owen Fowle had given England an early 3-0 lead, Elliot Daly landed a massive 55-metre kick midway through the half to move his side six points to nil ahead. 24 minutes in, Maxime Machineau reduced the arrears to three points with a well-struck effort. At last, the home crowd had something to cheer. Soon after, Farrell and Machineau exchanged penalties before the French scrum half drew the sides level with another good strike from distance after England were penalised for offside. This one left the sides level at nine points apiece at the break. England's quest for four tries was looking like a task that was beyond them on the day. Eight minutes after the break, England's slim hopes of that all-important bonus point victory took a huge setback. Following a Trandu crossfield kick, France threatened in the corner and Anthony Watson made a desperate attempt to stop Benjamin Fowle. In doing so, Watson was deemed to have committed a high tackle on the French number 14. The yellow card and penalty try resulted after consultation between match referee Jakob Piper and the TMO. It was a moment of desperation from the English fullback, but it left his side trailing 16 points to nine and down to 14 men for 10 minutes. It's in the act of scoring a try. It's unfortunate to get him around the neck. I know it's not deliberate, but it prevents a probable try. He's going down. Yellow card. Into the last quarter of the game, with England still requiring four tries, it was France who extended their lead to 19-9 with another well-struck Machineau penalty. Time was running out for England, but they did give their supporters something to cheer about six minutes from the end. Daly did well from a wide position to tap back inside to Johnny May, and he dived over for a try. Too little too late in terms of the four-try bonus, but England were back within striking distance of at least winning the match. Great awareness from the Wasps winger to find his on-rushing teammate. When Farrell converted, it was 19 points to 16. France steadied themselves and with a couple of minutes remaining, Boxis found the target from in front of the posts. That left it 22 points to 16. England in need of a converted score to snatch victory at the death and they came very close to achieving that. Although, with the clock well past the 80-minute mark, Boxis had a chance to win the match by finding touch. However, to French dismay, he failed to put it out and England could build one last chance. However, despite severe pressure, the French rearguard held firm and the knock-on in front of the posts resulted in a full-time whistle and some wild French celebrations. England's first back-to-back -back defeats in the Eddie Jones era and first consecutive away defeats in the championship since 2009. A result that means Ireland are NatWest Six Nations champions for 2018. England will be hoping to prevent them from doing the Grand Slam at Twickenham next week while France round off their campaign away to Wales. At the Stade de France, it finished. France 22, England 16.